slope at that one particular point. So here's the formula we're going to be using right here. It's f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h, and it's the limit as h approaches zero. Okay, now a is the x-coordinate of the point that you're interested in finding the slope at, okay, the instantaneous rate of change. And just to show you a quick refresher here, what we have is we have our point a, okay, comma f of a, okay, meaning if you put that a value into your function, that's the y value, okay. And if you go just a little distance to the right, we'll call that distance h, okay, so from the origin to here, this is a plus h, okay, so that's the x-coordinate of this point. If you put that x-coordinate into your function, you get f of a plus h. So you're with me so far? Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the slope formula. So we're gonna do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that's how you get this formula. So it's just reduced down a little bit. So let's go ahead and jump into some examples. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find out the slope, okay, at this point, one comma two. Now, I always like to draw a picture, this is just me. I just like to see what's going on. You don't have to do this, but just to understand a little bit better. This is a square root function that's been shifted left three. So one, two, three, and it looks something like that, okay? Now we're interested in at one comma two, which is gonna be right about there, we're interested in what's the slope, okay, of the tangent line, the line that just barely touches that function at that one point, one comma two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use this formula over here. We've got square root, okay, of one plus h plus three, okay, minus f of one, which is one plus three squared of uh, four is gonna give us two, all divided by h. And we're looking at the limit as h approaches zero. Okay, so you're with me so far? So all I did was I put a plus h, in this case a is one, so I put one plus h in place of x, and I put one in place of x here, okay, that's f of one, and that gives you the square root of four, which is two. Now the only thing we have to do now is we just have to simplify this a little bit further. We're gonna use the rationalizing technique. So what, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. So this is one plus h plus three plus two, and I'm gonna do the same thing to the denominator as well, one plus h plus three plus two. So you see the sign here, minus, I'm making this plus. Whatever I multiply the numerator by, I wanna multiply the denominator by, so I don't change the overall value of this fraction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna distribute or FOIL, so we've got the first term and the first term, that's just gonna give us one plus h plus three. Whenever you multiply a square root times itself, you just get what's underneath. Now the inside terms and the outside terms, those are gonna cancel because one's positive and one's negative. And then the last terms, we have a negative two times a positive two, which is a negative four. And this is all divided by h times this quantity right here. So this is one plus h plus three plus two. Okay, now if I simplify this down a little bit further, what do we get? We've got three minus four, which is negative one, plus one is zero. So those are canceling out. We've got h divided by h, so that's gonna be, here, let's simplify it one step at a time. So this is gonna be one plus h plus three plus two. The h's are gonna cancel, so that's gonna leave us with one. And then now, remember, this is the limit as h is approaching zero. If we put zero in place of h, what do we get? We get four, square root of four is two, plus two is four, so we get one fourth. So what that tells us is that the instantaneous rate of change, okay, the slope, okay, of the tangent line at this point, one comma two, is gonna be one fourth. Now, if you wanna write the equation of the tangent line, you've got the slope now, you have the point, you can use the point slope formula.